The first epistle to the Corinthians ancient Greek, a epistoli pros Corinthius usually referred to simply as 1 Corinthians and often written 1 Corinthians, is one of the Pauline epistles of the New Testament of the Christian Bible. The epistle says that Paul the Apostle and Sosthenes our brother wrote it to the Church of God which is at Corinth. 1 Cor. 1-1-2 Although the scholarly consensus holds that Sosthenes was the amanuensis who wrote down the text of the letter at Paul's direction, called a masterpiece of pastoral theology, it addresses various issues that had arisen in the Christian community at Corinth. This epistle contains some well-known phrases, including all things to all men, 922, through a glass, darkly, 1312, and when I was a child, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child." 1311 Authorship There is consensus among historians and Christian theologians that Paul is the author of the first epistle to the Corinthians c. AD 53–54. The letter is quoted or mentioned by the earliest of sources, and is included in every ancient canon, including that of Marcion. The personal and even embarrassing texts about immorality in the church increase consensus, however, a passage may have been inserted at a later stage. This passage is 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verses 34-35, whose authenticity has been hotly debated. Part of the reason for doubt is that in some manuscripts, the verses come at the end of the chapter instead of at its present location. Furthermore, Paul is here appealing to the law which is uncharacteristic of him. Lastly, the verses come into conflict with 11-5 where women are described as praying and prophesying. As well, 10-1-22 is sometimes regarded as another letter fragment, interpolation, or inserted midrash because, among other things, this section virtually seems to equate the consumption of idle meat with idolatry, but Paul seems more lenient regarding its consumption in 8-1-13 and 10-23-11-1. Such views are rejected by other scholars who give arguments for the unity of 8-1-11-1. Composition About the year AD 50, towards the end of his second missionary journey, Paul founded the church in Corinth, before moving on to Ephesus, a city on the west coast of today's Turkey, about 180 miles by sea from Corinth. From there he traveled to Caesarea, and Antioch. Paul returned to Ephesus on his third missionary journey and spent approximately three years there Acts chapter 19 verse 8, 1910, 2031. It was while staying in Ephesus that he received disconcerting news of the community in Corinth regarding jealousies, rivalry, and immoral behavior. It also appears that based on a letter the Corinthians sent Paul e the congregation was requesting clarification on a number of matters, such as marriage and the consumption of meat previously offered to idols. By comparing Acts of the Apostles 18-1-17 and mentions of Ephesus in the Corinthian correspondence, scholars suggest that the letter was written during Paul's stay in Ephesus, which is usually dated as being in the range of AD 53-57. Anthony C. Thiselton suggests that it is possible that 1 Corinthians was written during Paul. S. First brief stay in Ephesus, at the end of his second journey, usually dated to early AD 54. However, it is more likely that it was written during his extended stay in Ephesus, where he refers to sending Timothy to them Acts chapter 19 verse 22, Icor, 417. Structure The epistle may be divided into seven parts. Salutation 1-1-3 Paul addresses the issue regarding challenges to his apostleship and defends the issue by claiming that it was given to him through a revelation from Christ. The salutation the first section of the letter reinforces the legitimacy of Paul's apostolic claim. Thanksgiving 1 to 4 minus 9 The thanksgiving part of the letter is typical of Hellenistic letter writing. In a thanksgiving recitation the writer thanks God for health, a safe journey, deliverance from danger, or good fortune. In this letter, the thanksgiving introduces charismata and gnosis, topics to which Paul will return and that he will discuss at greater length later in the letter. Division in Corinth 110 
Facts of division Causes of division Cure for division Immorality in Corinth, 5–1–6–20 Discipline an immoral brother Resolving personal disputes Sexual purity Difficulties in Corinth, 7–1–14–40 Marriage Christian liberty Worship Doctrine of Resurrection, 15–1–58 Closing 16 -1 Paul's closing remarks in his letters usually contain his intentions and efforts to improve the community. He would first conclude with his paraenesis and wish them peace by including a prayer request, greet them with his name and his friends with a holy kiss, and offer final grace and benediction. Now concerning the contribution for the saints, as I directed the churches of Galatia, let all your things be done with charity. Greet one another with a holy kiss. I, Paul, write this greeting with my own hand. If any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema maranatha. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with you. My love be with you all in Christ Jesus. Amen. Content some time before 2 Corinthians was written, Paul paid them a second visit 2 Cor, 12, 14, 2 Cor, 13 to, 1, to check some rising disorder 2 Cor, 2 to 1, 2 Cor, 13 to 2, and wrote them a letter, now lost 1 Cor, 5 to 9. They had also been visited by Apollos Acts 18, perhaps by Peter 1 Cor, 1 12, and by some Jewish Christians who brought with them letters of commendation from Jerusalem 1 Cor, 1 12, 2 Cor, 3 to 1, 2 Cor. 516, 2 Cor, 1123. Paul wrote this letter to correct what he saw as erroneous views in the Corinthian church. Several sources informed Paul of conflicts within the church at Corinth, Apollos, Acts chapter 19 verse 1, a letter from the Corinthians, the household of Chloe, and finally Stephanas and his two friends who had visited Paul, 111, 1617. Paul then wrote this letter to the Corinthians, urging uniformity of belief that ye all speak the same thing and that there be no divisions among you." 110 and expounding Christian doctrine. Titus and a brother whose name is not given were probably the bearers of the letter to the church at Corinth 2 Corinthians 2 verse 13, 8-6, 16-18. In general, divisions within the church at Corinth seem to be a problem, and Paul makes it a point to mention these conflicts in the beginning. Specifically, pagan roots still hold sway within their community. Paul wants to bring them back to what he sees as correct doctrine, stating that God has given him the opportunity to be a skilled master builder, to lay the foundation and let others build upon it 1 Cor 3.10. Later, Paul wrote about immorality in Corinth by discussing an immoral brother, how to resolve personal disputes, and sexual purity. Regarding marriage, Paul states that it is better for Christians to remain unmarried, but that if they lacked self-control, it is better to marry than burn. Pyroushthai which Christians have traditionally thought meant to burn with sinful desires. The epistle may include marriage as an apostolic practice in 1 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 5. Do we not have the right to be accompanied by a believing wife, as do the other apostles and the brothers of the Lord and Cephas Peter? In the last case, the letter concurs with Matthew chapter 8 verse 14, which mentions Peter having a mother-in-law and thus, by interpolation, a wife. However, the Greek word for wife is the same word for woman. The early church fathers including Tertullian, Jerome, and Augustine state the Greek word is ambiguous and the women in 1 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 5 were women ministering to the apostles as women ministered to Christ cf Matthew chapter 27 verse 55, Luke chapter 8 verses 1 to 3, and were not wives, and assert they left their offices of marriage. To follow Christ, Paul also argues that married people must please their spouses, just as every Christian must please God. The letter is also notable for mentioning the role of women in churches, that for instance they must remain silent 1 Cor, 1434-35, and yet they have a role of prophecy and apparently speaking tongues in churches 11-2-16. If 1434-35 is not an interpolation, certain scholars resolve the tension between these texts by positing that wives were either contesting their husbands' inspired speeches at church, or the wives, women were chatting and asking questions in a disorderly manner when others were giving inspired utterances. 
Their silence was unique to the particular situation in the Corinthian gatherings at that time, and on this reading, Paul did not intend his words to be universalized for all women of all churches of all eras. After discussing his views on worshipping idols, Paul finally ends with his views on resurrection. He states that Christ died for our sins, and was buried, and rose on the third day according to the scriptures 1 Cor. 15-3. Paul then asks, Now if Christ is preached as raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? 1 Cor. 15-12 and addresses the question of resurrection. Throughout the letter, Paul presents issues that are troubling the community in Corinth and offers ways to fix them. Paul states that this letter is to admonish them as beloved children. They are expected to become imitators of Jesus and follow the ways in Christ as he, Paul, teaches in all his churches 1 Cor. 4 See also Topic. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 1 Corinthians chapter 11 on church order 1 Corinthians chapter 13 the tongues of men and angels verse 1 Corinthians chapter 15 on the resurrection Christian head covering Pauline privilege Second epistle to the Corinthians Textual variants in the first epistle to the Corinthians Third epistle to the Corinthians Topic. References Topic. Topic. Further reading Topic. Blenkinsop, Joseph, The Corinthian Mirror, A Study of Contemporary Themes in a Pauline Epistle I. E. In 1 Corinthians, Sheed and Ward, London, 1964. Konzelman, Hans der Erste Brief and die Korinther, KEKV, Göttingen 1969. Robertson, A. and A. Plummer, A Critical and Exegetical Commentary on the First Epistle of St. Paul to the Corinthians Edinburgh 1961. The Selton, Anthony C. The First Epistle to the Corinthians, A Commentary on the Greek Text NIGTC, W. M. B. Eerdmans Publishing Co., Grand Rapids 2000. Young Sook Kim. Christ's Body in Corinth, The Politics of a Metaphor Fortress, 2008. Topic. External links Topic. A Brief Introduction to 1 Corinthians International Standard Bible Encyclopedia, 1 Corinthians Corinthians, Epistles to the The American Cyclopedia, 1879 Corinthians, First Epistle to the Easton's Bible Dictionary, 1897. Corinthians, Epistles to the Encyclopædia Britannica, 7, 11th ed., 1911. pp. 150-154. First Corinthians Public Domain Audiobook at LibriVox Various Versions.